Today's reading is in Matthew, the very last chapter, chapter 28, the last five verses, 16 to 20. This is the Sunday lectionary reading, and it ends Matthew, but will, as the Christian year goes, send us back into Matthew to consider the ways Jesus did teach discipleship. This is Matthew 28 at verse 16. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. But some doubt it. The word of the Lord. You would think, wouldn't you, that these 11 men following Jesus up another mountain would have had enough. John tells us they almost did. They went back to their fishing. But you would think that after everything else, enough was enough, and we're ready for a return to normalcy. And here, as we noted, some doubted. A strange word under the circumstances, it draws us to ask, what is it that they doubted? Certainly not that Jesus was alive and before them, or, according to their own direct experience, that he had died on the cross and been buried and resurrected, weird enough in itself, but doubted that they wanted to go on, doubted that they could go on, doubted that they could follow some new path which they suspected was about to be revealed, and it was, these are men who have been stretched far beyond any normal breaking point. And now they can see Jesus about to give them one new set of instructions. Worship is one thing. Obedience is quite another. And Jesus says, all authority in heaven on earth, in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Remember, Satan promised him all authority on earth, but this goes far beyond that. Through Jesus' obedience and sacrifice, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him. Something new is going on here. And there are glimmers of hope and encouragement. And now comes the instruction. Or is it a command? Or is it a request? Or is it a hope? Or is it all of these? He says, go. So much like God in his call to Abraham says, go. now into all the world. What about Israel? What about the mission to your people? This is a call that is unheard of beyond the capacity for these 11 men raised in Galilee and surrounding areas in a tiny little cultural backwater to comprehend. 
It's as if their entire belief system must be erased. One click of a mouse button and your mind is gone, so to speak. Were they confused, surprised, stunned, overjoyed? On the one hand, I am tempted to say that we are so far away from this that we cannot really get a handle on it or understand it or comprehend it. And too often this is simply a convenient excuse not to follow Jesus. On the other hand, I think we understand it perfectly. And I think like the disciples, we doubt. Not necessarily that Jesus died and rose again. That is easy enough to believe for many people. But we doubt our ability to follow in his footsteps. And so we substitute for following all manner of religious observances or activities in its place. But like the disciples, this may be one of the lines of scripture I understand most fully. They worshiped, but some doubted. The call to discipleship is severe. As one early writer put it, when Christ calls a person, Christ calls them to come and die. And can I do that? Can I die to self that I might live to Christ? And I'm skipping a great deal of thought here because I want to say that today we are called to be disciples. We are called as they were called to continue Jesus' mission. Jesus' mission is one that is holistic. That is, it's one that speaks to and intends to heal physically, emotionally, socially, and spiritually. Our time needs this. Every time has needed this. But because it is here and in front of us, we can see perhaps better just how much our world needs this. We need this healing that Jesus brings, and it's our call as disciples to be the ones who witness to it in our lives and in our speech to bring this healing. It is indeed a fearsome call. But Jesus promises to be with us now and to the end of the age. So as he said to Thomas, do not disbelieve but believe. Do not doubt, but believe. Let us pray. Eternal God, our beginning and our end, be our starting point and our haven, and accompany us on this day's journey. Use our hands to do the work of your creation and use our lives to bring others the new life you give this world. In Jesus Christ, Redeemer of all. Amen.